I decided I want to create a video that helps you to understand the parameter lists inside of Reactor. And parameter lists are the list of parameters we can control in all kinds of devices. So you may realize that whenever you pick one of these default configurations, we have procured them to only control parameters that we thought were interesting and hope is interesting to you. But it may be that you want to add many other things. And in those cases, you would uh, normally go into a configuration, click an item, and then change the value of it. So over here, in um, the device list, these are devices that we're currently connected to. If I go in here and I press this button, parameter list, I see all the parameters from the ATEM switcher. And we can do that for every single one of these devices. And that will help us to know what we can actually control because um, that that's the complete set of options that is available to us. Uh, for this whole thing, I, I think I'll just make a custom configuration. Um, parameter lists, all right. So um, we just have that as our default. And um, yeah, this is some leftovers from my previous video. And uh, but up here, we would um, be able to play around with the controllers. Let's just focus on on what we see in these displays and how we can map stuff to the buttons and and so on and and how we are informed about those options from the parameter list. So they look like this, uh, as you saw just before. So let's go back to the home screen here. And then um, see, we have a, an ATEM. That's the one that we saw just over here. So when you look at this list, you have a headline here that will normally mention all the models we support of a given device. And why would we have all these models? Well, because they tend to have different options. Um, they for like for audio. No, actually, one of the better examples would be program input video source. So that is one of those that you would typically encounter. So ah, okay, that seems to be pretty much like the same for all of them. Why would that be? That's actually a surprise to me because all these inputs normally don't apply. Okay, bad example. Let's go up here. Let, let, let's take this one. This is from the Fairlight audio processor in the ATEM switches. You see that there's a model here. Let me just pick this one because this is easier. Peaking left, left peaking on audio. On the ATEM 1ME Constellation HD, these are the options that exist that for, for which we can read back peak information. I can see that I can read back stuff because it feedback says floating. And then it seems that it's a floating point decimal or uh, decibel value that I, I'm reading back, but I cannot change it. So this is a read only thing, okay? That comes from, that's my conclusion from looking at control that is, is blanked out. But before I can read back any value, I need to specify which of these it is. So for ATEM 2 ME constellation, we have a different number of sources that we can work with, but still there's no control. So now you begin to see the pattern and why um, different ATEM switches would have different things we can do with them here. Let's see if we can find some other examples. See, this is another read only, but if we want to go to something that is read write, then take something like audio mixer monitor solo input. For the ATEM 1 ME production studio, we have a binary control, so it's either or, and we can read it back from the switcher. And then we have these as the dimension that we can set. If we go to um, setting sources like, or see downstream key as source available. So these that called available are basically something that will return also binary information like true if a, um, if the Kia fill source uh, is available for a, um, for the, the Kia in this case. So um, we need to choose the ME, the um, upstream Kia, and also which source we are talking about. And then it will return true if that can be selected. So this is usually used in complex behaviors where you want to uh, show a little icon that indicates whether or not something can be selected. That's what all these availability parameters are usually there for. Let's go back here and uh, look at the Canon XC because that's another one that is uh, also very exciting. Canon has a protocol that is spanning many of their Pentel zoom cameras, also their ES Cinema Series cameras, and now also XF 605. And when you look at this one, it's it's a little bit more calm than the uh, Atom one. So um, maybe don't focus too much on what this says, but if you scroll over and see then for the CRN 700, 
there's something related to output focus guide here, which is not found on N300 and N500. And there is a control that has two options. It's basically binary control, you know, on and off. Um, but in this case, it is presented as an option list, like these two options exist. And feedback is uh, normal, the same coming back from it. So basically what you see here is that it only applies to certain models. When it's spanning multiple, like in this case, you, you can infer that this function is true for these three together. Uh, so there are three cameras that doesn't have the function, there are four cameras that has the function. That's what we read out of it. Okay, so in many other cases, like for, for this one, safe area type, whatever that means, we have control, yes, and we have feedback. So it's read and write. And the control seems to fall into a range of nine options that starts with the value zero and all the way up to the value eight. And they have these labels. So actually, if we took that into a controller, automatically that label would come from the device column and be shown. And let's uh, take an example for that. One that I think, do we have like full auto somewhere? because that is one that we like to see quite a lot, the shooting mode kind of thing. Do we have something else that we can quickly find here? Okay, let's just go with shooting mode. So uh, let's go back to our Rack Fusion and imagine that on this encoder here, we want to put a shooting mode function. Okay, so we just click, create a new behavior on that parameter list layer, we pick it from sorry, from the device called the CIN, and then we type in shooting mode here. So let's just do that. And we see that it says full auto. And if I go into this mode, then you can see I can go between full auto, manual scene, manual full auto. Okay. And that corresponds pretty much to what I see right here for that's the CIN 300 camera. Okay, so it has those. It turns out that CIN 500 only has those. So that's kind of interesting because what if I change this one over so that, um, let's just check here, I can change it over to CIN 500 and I know I have one of those on this IP address. So if I change it to that, still keeping the same device ID, then it should actually pull this out of the camera and the model description that now on this one, we have only two options. We have manual and full auto according to our list here, because the device call knows that for a CIN 500 camera, it's a different set of options. I hope you can start to appreciate how much work we have put into this and how clever it is that React is able to take that information about a parameter out and apply to the behaviors that is um, going on to the, um, to the knobs and, and so on. So what else can we find in here? Uh, sometimes we also find like string, um, string feedback uh, would typically be for labels and so on. That is the kind of thing that you would put into a display. I don't know if that's so interesting. Um, apart from lists like on, off, binary and so on, sometimes you also find like a range. You find a value can be like in a, in a range like this one, white balance color correction value. And that is a range from minus 20 to plus 20. And this is true for a camera that we don't have, which is the CIN 700. So not the best example to work on. Um, okay, what else could we do? We could uh, maybe play a little bit with the um, a value like the ATEM switcher has a master volume. So let's try that. Uh, let's type in master here for those parameters. We find the volume volume position here. I like that one. The one called volume display gives you a better display experience because it will show you decibel values. Now we have a normalized value from zero to 100, I think. And um, I'm just curious what happens if we try to adjust it. We can do that. Can we not? I don't know why it blocked at that point. Okay. So just my simulation didn't work. Okay, I can kind of turn it down all the way uh, here, apparently. And let's just um, quickly check with the ATEM software control. So if I if I move the fader here, 
Let's see if we can see both. You can see, yeah, that is the value that I'm changing up here. All right, so that's nice. Uh, just a note, if you haven't followed on different other videos, quite often when you have a parameter range like this, it will apply step change automatically. But before we, we consider that, let's just go and check. This is the core BMD ATEM from the device. So let's just search up the parameter that we found. What is it called? Fairlight. Fairlight audio master volume position. So I just copy this string and quickly go over here, search on the web page. Ha, that was. Now you see, um, this is pretty clear, right? It says on an ATEM Mini, it's a floating point value from zero to 100. Okay, and that's exactly what we get, right? So that's really neat. Now, the, the little thing that I wanted to mention is that the master behavior step change, if you type in long range, then you get usually a better experience because with this one, um, it works the, you know, it has a, like a fine course mode, that little indication there. If that is set, then you will adjust in smaller steps. The steps are actually smaller right now than they were if you click. Oh no, or maybe it's the different way around. So now we have the small steps. What is it? It's like, you know, half, half a point every time. I click once and then we get 10, 10 times as large steps. Okay, so it's just a way to kind of speed this up and down. Step change long range is better if you have a long value range. And step change is great if you have this over here, which is like just two options. There you don't want to use step change long range. So that's just a little background information for you guys on, on that. Let's uh, just check out another device that has a parameter list like the AJ Kumo. Click here, uh, look at this. Now these are quite, you know, the same for presets, preset label, preset recall. But notice here we have something called one shot trigger for recalling a preset. And we also have that for for pen, um, pencil zoom cameras. Let's uh, find preset recall. You, you find this is sort of the same. Um, if you go down to preset recall here, it's a one shot trigger. That's what it says in the list. And uh, that is super easy. It does have dimensions like this preset. So basically, if I want to recall a preset on my camera um, in the configuration, like let's say on, on this button, I want to do that, recall a preset. I'll just pick it from the camera, preset recall this. And then that dimension here would be the information that is found in this list here. That's which preset is it that I'm recalling. That's what you said here, submit. And now you have it uh, right here. Then we could do the same on this one. Maybe we could just shift drag across them, batch edit these two, because I kind of want the same here. I can just copy it down. Oh, right. That's, that's true. I need to edit it. I need the number two instead of the number one. So that's one of the differences that I want to mark. All right. So I have that right now. Let's, let's check if, um, there's something that I don't like to see here. There's still, oh yes, I need to, the master behavior should be trigger because trigger is designed for these scenarios where we just need to send a one shot trigger. That is actually kind of the point that I wanted to make. And um, just drag this aside and then try this and this one for recall. I don't see much of a recall right now. Why is that? I know it sounds improbable, but somehow preset number one and two was not set on the CIN 500 camera. So I just set the IP address back to the CIN 300 camera here. And that's the one we are looking at here. So if we go over to the configuration and in simulation mode, we should be able to observe that I can recall presets on the camera with the settings that I just added. And that was the one shot trigger type that you find in the parameter list here. So we have uh, even more things to look at. That would be going here to the project D out. Let's see if that has something special. Now, this is one of the devices where we've only implemented a single model at this point. And uh, we, you've, we find much of the same. We find uh, sometimes we have no control, but we have floating point stuff coming back. And that seems to be an error, but that is like post fader peaks and levels and things like that. Then uh, at other times we have stuff like mute, which is a binary thing, you know, turn that on and off. Um, it has feedback so we can read back. And then it has dimensions like channel. Now notice how dimensions can be, you know, different. In this case, it's just numerical from one to 32. In this case, it is a list, an option list. We call that with eight options with the values one to eight. And then these 
uh, labels attached to them. Master, in this case, would be one to four with the A, B, C, D labels attached to them. And then finally, there are channels, which are just like an integer value. So if this is input gain that we want to control, then we could try this on the configuration. Take the fader on this one to control that. So uh, let's just uh, click on this, create a behavior for it, and then pick the direct out. Then what was it? Input, input gain, input gain. Okay, so the mat mix would be mat mix number one, A, master A, and then take channel number three. Okay, so just submit that. And that means that we should now be able to control that dimension using this one. Let's find Globcon. That's the software that, that runs the show over here. So we were on MadMix 1 here. Was it channel A? And then it was like number 3, this, this guy. So let's see what happens to this if we are using the fader here. Let's see if we can separate this away a little bit. So... Okay, let's move the fader and there you go. We are controlling that parameter and that parameter was essentially consisting of three dimensions, one, two, and three, you know, like parameters for the parameter. Let me see, where were we? Okay, it was actually this one. These three dimensions had to be set for us to, uh, to pick which channel it is that we are controlling within this floating point range up here, minus 144 up to 18. So as you can see, guys, in Reactor, there is a separation between the parameter and how it is used on a button, knob, fader, or joystick. The last is a behavior. That the behavior is how a parameter is mapped to a hardware component. And therefore, when you think about what can we do with the Skyhawk controller, there is like two components of that. The, the first one is, is it possible at all? And this is where you look into the parameter lists, which is... Uh, finding the device core, seeing if we support the model. When you found the model, see if we if we support the parameter that you're after, then what kind of control do we offer? Typically, that's limited by the device. Sometimes we can't read feedback from the device. Many times we can, luckily. And that reveals a little bit about what is the type of control. Is it a one-shot trigger? Is it a, an integer or floating point range? Is it a um, option list with specific options? And do we have dimensions? to pick out which yeah dimension in the device that we are controlling. So that's all one thing. And the other thing is for each time we select these, we have these behaviors or master behaviors coming along that says something about how is it managed on the knob or button and so on. So in this case, step change is one. We pick this one step change long range for the volume. We click the fader automatically something called fader was picked for us and that's because the system here is clever enough to pick a reasonable master behavior when you pick the parameter and then you click here and you see it, it picks uh, behavior scahoy trigger because it sees oh this is a one shot type and most likely he wants to have the trigger type and then of course you can always go and change the default feedback to have a different title if you prefer to see something else like preset save and it will say yeah okay up there in the title mm, okay so then in the text line we'll just type in my preset and then you get that into the display right there all right so that's it for now thanks for watching and uh good luck with configuring reactor